Ten warning signs of corporate fascism. Intense nationalism. Fascism is essentially a corporate state that focuses on the nationalistic impulses in people to ensure loyalty to the state. To ensure conformity, you need corporate ownership of the media. State ownership can work, but typically corporate ownership is a facet of fascism. Demonising other groups, the outsider, the conspirator, whether you say it's the person who follows the wrong belief, or the person conspiring behind the scenes to do harm to you. And this is a kind of scapegoating. Militarised law enforcement. Having a militarised law enforcement, that's to say, the police are essentially the army on the streets. A key part of having a regime that ensures loyalty is to have an oppressive arm to control the people. Typically this manifests as a military-like police force. Due to the corporate nature of the fascist state, breaking up unions and the loss of workers' rights are essential. To ensure there can be no uprisings, you break down the tool for uprisings. You break down the worker when and where necessary, but ensure their loyalty through nationalistic vigour and scapegoating the enemies of the state. The mixture of government and religion, where government gets involved in religion and religion becomes mixed in with government itself. This blurs loyalties and sets up a system that it combines the spiritual and physical loyalties towards that of the goals of the ruling elite. Corporate money ruling over politics and politicians, where you can support whoever you wish and make elections seem to be free and open, but you're putting your money behind certain individuals who are willing to do what you want them to do. By focusing money in this way, the political process and any pretense of a political process is null and void. Trade deals. Opening up free trade between nations for the good of corporations themselves, not for the good of the people. Where cheap labour can be found, the jobs will go too, whereas the average individual will find their standard of living doesn't rise, or doesn't rise very quickly, due to this hemorrhaging of jobs to areas where production is far cheaper. The goal is not to support an increase in trade and cooperation between peoples, but to have a cheaper production and therefore ensure greater profitability for corporate interests. Destroying the middle class. Typically what you find with a corporate fascist system is where the gap between the rich and the poor becomes wider. Due to profiteering, you see less money going to the middle class pushing them out of the middle class into the working class, they suffer poverty. When it comes down to elections, you have suspicious or potentially rigged elections, where they seem to be quite democratic, seem to be quite open, but there's many ways in which they can rig the entire process. Not merely by having political money, not merely by playing on religion, not merely by using any number of other tools but they can also simply make something appear to be quite open, appear to be a question of the choice of the people. They make the vote seem to be fair and that your vote counted, but in actuality, your vote counted for very little. The reason why you should be aware of the warning signs of fascism is that these signs are present in many societies. We're not merely talking about third world backwaters, we're talking about many nations and many political views that play upon people's nationalism, their patriotism, who believe it's perfectly acceptable to demonise groups based on their own bias, to will the people towards what they wish to will them towards. And very often it is down to the corporate interests that back these individuals, ensuring they get into power, or at the very least, ensure that the types of policies they seek get implemented. Those things that don't benefit society in general, but benefit the incredibly wealthy.